Welcome to Dynamic Living the Total You with our episode In Focus, Hard Talk. Ngayon po kami ay nagagalak because we have here in our studio a cardiologist, a practicing one from the Philippine Heart Center. Dahil alam po natin na napakahalaga na pag-usapan natin ang ating mga puso. I'd like to welcome to the show Dr. Jasper Val Ian Pablo. Magandang araw sa iyo, Dr. Jasper. Magandang araw din po sa iyo, Doc. It's a pleasure to have me here. Yes, and we are very much honored, no? Bakit kaya, Doc Jasper, eh, itong cardiovascular diseases, eh, it seems apparently na hindi pa din bumababa ang kanyang number of persons or patients who gets affected by this. Yes, Doc. The latest statistics still shows that cardiovascular disease is still number two worldwide and locally as the leading cause of mortality and morbidity. And it's because of our lifestyle still hindi nababago. It's because we are adapting yung mga pagkain natin sa fast food, which are all high in salt, high in fats, which are risk factors in developing cardiovascular diseases. Also, at the same time, um, marami kasi sa ating mga um, kababayan na they are not worried if they have hypertension just because they are taking medications, akala nila okay na. And most of these hypertensive patients, they are really uncontrolled, also true with diabetes. And also, siguro it's because of the trend in work jobs from blue-collar jobs before, now mas maraming white-collar jobs, causing an increase in the physical inactivity. Sabi nga nila, physical inactivity is the new smoking. Mm-hmm. Pabalikan ko yung sinabi mo, isa-isahin natin, himay-himayin natin. Yes, Doc. Heto sinasabi mo na food or anything that we take in is actually a great factor why we would still develop, you know, a hardening of the arteries or kaya naman why the heart would malfunction. Yes, Doc. Specifically, fats will cause um, formation of atherosclerosis or yun yung sinasabi nating fat deposition doon sa mga ugat sa puso. Mm-hmm. And yung mga fats, fat components of yung mga pagkain sa fast foods, they are really bad cholesterol. And which, yet, makikita natin, Doc Jasper, na ang mga tao parang, yun, alam mo yun, dumadag sa, sa fast food yes. chains. Kasi very easy, very convenient. And mind you, ha, affordable. Yes, Doc. <coughs> Um, yun yung isang reason kaya marami pa rin siguro kumakain sa fast food despite the warning na yung mga fats sa fast foods are matataas or masasamang cholesterol yun nandoon because of the easy accessibility and the cheapness of these foods. Mm-hmm. However, kung pag talaga natin health-wise, um, fast foods are really not recommended. Mm-hmm. And yet, nandiyan sila everywhere and yes, everywhere. No. You were saying about blue-collar job to white-collar jobs. Bakit? Previously kasi, Doc, if we will notice from the history, ang um, trabaho ng mga tao, mostly yung mga <coughs> mga mabibigat na trabaho, <coughs> mga naglalakad, and then ngayon, shift to white-collar jobs Commonly, mga nakaupo na lang habang nagtatrabaho. Eight hours while doing office hours, nakaupo lang tayo. And lalo, lalo tayo. mga BPOs ngayon. Yes, ano? And you get to see an increase in this. Like, even the younger generation, itong mga millennials, they like, you know, this kind of jobs kasi it's yes, very doc. attractive to them. So, this alone can also account why there is an increase in the number of cardiovascular diseases. Yes, Doc. Um, actually... Um, the youngest we had in heart center for bypass already because of a heart disease is a 25-year-old male and that's who very works young, in a BPO. Huh? Uh-huh. Yes, Doc. Okay. Now, if you look at it, uh, is there also a shift between a male and a female preponderance in terms of cardiovascular disease? Right now, Doc, wala naman po. It's still the same. Generally speaking, it, the predominance of male is still for heart diseases. Not How, for females. Huh? Not for females. Uh, the latest statistics show that still 70% of those with coronary heart disease are still males. Mm-hmm. Bakit kaya? Is it because there's a hormonal protection in, in terms of kung babae ka, you have hormones that will protect you from developing this? Yes, Doc. That's one factor. 
um, as what you've said, it's the hormones that protects these women from developing coronary heart disease. However, once a female is already postmenopausal, her risk of developing coronary heart disease or yung sakit sa puso equals, equals that of the male. Ah, okay. So, pareho na. Mm -hmm. Nagpapantay Or na. is it also possible aside from the hormonal, eh, itong mga kalalakihan kasi they bear the brunt of the problems or maybe the women are less stressed? Is it is stress here a factor to consider in the increase of the number of cases for coronary heart disease? Stress is not really a major risk factor in developing coronary heart disease. However, it affects the risk factors to develop coronary heart mm -hmm. disease. So it's parang it's a it's a comorbid factor yes, in doc. terms of developing that one. Yes. You mentioned a while ago also about diabetes and hypertension as comorbidities. Is it also possible, Doc Jasper, na because there is also a rise in the number of patients who develop diabetes mellitus or kaya naman hypertension? Hypertension, or sabihin na natin, mas madali bang i-treat kapag ka purely coronary artery disease or heart disease at wala namang comorbidities? Most of the patients with coronary heart disease, doctor, are already patients who have mm -hmm. hypertension, diabetes. Yung mga sinasabi ninyo, doc, na patients na solely coronary heart disease lang sila, these are patients na merong ibang problem like, ito yung mga nakikita natin sa mga bata mm -hmm. na meron silang problema mismo doon sa ugat nila. Mm. So, these are mostly congenital siguro, no? Pagkaganyan. Not necessarily, Not necessarily. congenital, Doc. Mm -hmm. Pero, yun yung mga tinatawag natin mga arteritis mm -hmm. or inflammation of the blood vessels okay. that but may that, lead to coronary But then, that can heart. also happen in a male or in adult, especially if that person is a smoker. Yes, uh -huh. Doc. And, yeah, can you expound on that? Smoking, actually smoking is the most common preventable cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. And smoking is a well-established risk factor in developing coronary heart disease. This was proven in the 1980s by the U.S. Surgeon General, which he firmly established that smoking increases the heart disease to as much as 50%. So, ang laki, no? Ang yes, taas. So, if you remove that one, at least you minimize now the possibility of you developing a coronary or a cardiovascular heart yes, disease. Yes, We'll take a very short break and then when we return, we'll continue on discussing because apparently, we have a lot to cover for these updates on our Heart Talk. Please stay tuned to Hope Channel. Ikaw ba ay may sakit sa puso o nais mong makaiwas sa sakit na ito? Ano-ano mga pagkain na dapat mong kainin at dapat mong iwasan? May tinatawag kami power plate. Ang isang bahagi ay tinatawag namin complex carbohydrates. Ito yung mga pagkain na kung saan magpapatibay ng ating puso. Ito ang mga brown rice, whole wheat bread, root crops, kamote, mais, gabi. At itong mga pagkain na ito ay tinatawag nating whole food, complex carbohydrates dahil hindi siya refined. Isa namang bahagi na kung saan gusto natin i-discuss sa inyo ay ang mga prutas. Kagaya ng papaya, apple, orange, pati yung mga lokal nating mga prutas ay may yaman ito sa antioxidant and phytochemicals na kung saan matutulungan ng ating mga ugat, ang ating pagdaloy ng dugo sa ating katawan, at makakaiwas din tayo sa mga uh, pre-radicals na kung saan nagkakos din ng heart disease. Isang bahagi naman po ng ating power plate ay ang mga tinatawag nating um, plant-based protein na ang mga sources nito ay coming from beans, legumes, tofu, mushrooms. So yung mga beans natin, mga munggo, kidney beans, red beans, black beans, ito po ay mataas sa L-arginine na kung saan yung ugat po natin ay matutulungan na um, yung mga plaques doon ay maialis, mabind at mailabas ng ating katawan. Isa naman pong bahagi ay yung tinatawag po natin mga gulay. Ang mga gulay po ay high in fiber na kung saan po malaking bagay para po uh, matulungan ng ating puso. Yung mga sitaw, mga kalabasa, talbos ng kamote, mga dahon, malunggay, alugbate, yan po ay para po makaiwas tayo sa sakit. At kung may sakit na, ay makakatulong po ito sa atin. Ngayon naman po, ano naman po ang mga pagkain na kailangan po nating maiwasan kung may sakit na po tayo sa puso? Isa po dito yung mga high-fat 
food. Yun po yung mga fried foods, yun po yung mga um, refined foods, at yun po yung mga junk food at yung mga fast food. So, nais po natin na kayo po ay maging healthy at kayo po ay gumaling sa mga karamdaman at kung wala pa pong karamdaman ay makaiwas tayo. Welcome back to Dynamic Living the Total You with our episode In Focus, Heart Talk with our guest here, Dr. Jasper Pablo. So, Dr. Jasper, eh, sundan ko yung sinabi natin kanina yes, about doc. smoking as a major, you know, playing a major role in developing coronary artery diseases. So, if, for example, I am a smoker for a long time and then I never developed any problems as yet, but then I stopped or quit smoking, will it cause a reversal in terms of my probability of developing a coronary artery disease? When we say risk factor, it means um, your probability of mm -hmm. having that disease. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you have this risk factor, you will develop this disease. That's why may mga tao who are smokers who do not develop mm -hmm. disease and may mga tao who are smoking or even non-smokers who develop this disease. Regarding the question, if a smoker who stops smoking, what will happen to his risk of developing a heart disease, it doesn't go to zero. It decreases, but it doesn't go mm -hmm. to zero. How come we do get to see a lot of younger people nowadays with a coronary artery disease? I mean, aside from what you said, you mentioned uh, sitting a sedentary lifestyle, being there eight hours in front of their monitors. Usually, lalo na yung mga nasa BPOs. Eh. Yes. O kaya naman, na napansin ko din, no? I'm into this, uh, we have this manufacturing company as our client, wherein everybody, the engineers were just, you know, sitting there because they were, you know, intent on doing their job. Itong mga makukuti na ginagawa nila. It will also cause an increase, di ba, for them yes, to develop that. So, what would it be for them to at least, you know, remove a little bit of that? Would it mean that they need to be moving around? They should be in between hours? They should have some mobility? Yes, Doc. Um, there are already ep epidemiologic studies and cross-sectional studies that supports exercise decreases the risk to develop coronary heart disease by as much as 40 percent. Mm -hmm. The current guidelines recommendation for exercise is we do exercise at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise for at least five times a week or a strenuous exercise of 30 minutes duration for at least or 20 minutes duration sorry 20 minutes duration for at least three times a week mm -hmm. and for those who are working in BPOs or in companies na nakaupo lang lagi mm -hmm. the recommendation is at least you stand up every 15 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. that decreases your risk to develop coronary heart disease 15 to 30 minutes but at least the standing can be around 5 or 10 minutes basta it's yes, going to be free so, yes, it, it should be allowed, no? Kasi, syempre, minsan yung iba ayaw eh. Baka akala nila, you know, you're not doing your job properly. Now, let's talk about if, what are the signs and symptoms or the warning signals na I may be having that problem o kaya naman I need to seek medical attention? Chest pain is still the most common symptom of a coronary heart disease. Um, however, there are certain group of people na po pwedeng hindi chest pain yung maramdaman niya. These are yung mga matatanda, yung mga may diabetes, or yung mga kababaihan. Usually, yung nararamdaman nila is indigestion or parang hindi natutunawan, nasusuka, kumakabog yung dibdib, or po pwedeng nahihilo, po pwedeng yun yung mga sintomas ng heart attack. Pero still, the most common symptom of a heart disease is chest pain. What is the probability, again, if you're talking about percentage of those who have a coronary artery disease that will, you know, eventually proceed to a myocardial infarction or a heart attack? We really, there are no data telling us that if you have this coronary artery disease, you have 50% or 60% mm -hmm. chance to develop um, a heart attack. Be it depends on the risk factors and the lifestyle of the patient. These risk factors plays uh, 
interplay in the development of diba, heart Dr. attack. Dr. Jasper, meron kayong stratification yes, in doc. terms of risk. Can yes. you at least briefly tell our viewers what are this? And in layman's term, explain to them na pag heto yung kayo, heto yung probability, so at least aware sila. We have what we call the pretest probability wherein we used to assess the patient if you are low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk in developing a coronary heart disease or a heart attack. However, right now, I cannot tell you because it depends on the severity or on the assessment of the chest pain of the patient. That's so why. So, yung chest pain will also be gauged at to severity. Yes. Hindi lang yung sasabihin mo na, Doc, medyo masakit, masikip po or masakit yung dibdib ko. Is that the common word that they use? Yes, Doc. However, it should also be noted that not all chest pain ay dahil sa heart attack. There are many other causes of mm -hmm. chest pain. Mm -hmm. That's why they should be assessed. Mm -hmm. However, for that pretest probability, we have to think of the comorbidities, the age of the patient, the quality, and the character of the chest. Including siguro yung capability nila to perform their daily activities. Will that also be taken into account? That's not part of the pretest probability however that's part of the assessment of the functional classification of the patient mm -hmm. kasi di, kung ano yung mga kaya uh, nilang kasi di ba yung iba sasabihin nila na doc dati nakakaakyat ako ng you know five stairs o kaya naman uh, ilang floors no pero lately kahit na maglakad lang ako ng ganito kalayo eh, parang hinihingal ako Isa sa mga sintomas yun, Doc, na po pwede ka merong sakit sa puso. Yung madaling mapagod, easy fatigability, shortness of breath. Eh, yung pagtulog nila, Doc Jasper, na minsan na, napapansin natin na magsire-reklamo na hindi na ako pwedeng matulog lying flat on bed. Diba? Para ang feeling ko, kailangan ko ng maraming unan para ako medyo makahinga ng mabuti. Yes, Doc. That's a heart disease. However, that's not part of the coronary heart disease. Mm -hmm. Po, pwedeng yun ay sintomas ng tinatawag nating heart failure or pagpalya ng puso. Mm -hmm. Which is dahil yun ay mangyayari kung yung heart disease mo ay hindi natin nagamot ng maayos. Ah, so, ibig sabihin yan, Dr. Jasper, eh, if you're going to look at it in a, in a spectrum of a disease process, so una sa lahat, they might feel something or they might not, no? but yes, something is going on. And then they have the risk factors. Mm -hmm. And then they may develop a coronary artery, artery disease, so meron na naman. And eventually, pagka nagkaroon sila noon, pwede din palang mag-fail yung hearts nila. Yes, uh -huh. Doc. Pag hindi natin nagamot na maayos mm -hmm. yung coronary heart disease nila, pwede talagang pumalya ang puso. Mm -hmm. However, hindi lahat ng pagpalya ng puso ay dahil sa coronary artery disease. Okay, so tayo will take a very short break and when we return, we'll see what are the diagnostics. Ano ba ang pwedeng gawin upang matulungan, madiscover kaagad ang, kung anong meron doon sa loob na ating mga puso. Please stay tuned to Hope Channel. Ang kolesterol at ang fats ay parehas pong makikita sa ating katawan, parehas po silang lipids, at meron din po itong makikita sa ating mga pagkain. May tinatawag po tayong good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Yung bad cholesterol po, yung tinatawag natin LDL, ay dapat po nasa 90 mg per deciliter lang sa ating katawan o below. Ngayon po, tumataas po ito sa pamamagitan ng mga pagkain na unhealthy. Yung mga prineprito, yung mga dairy products, yung mga donuts, yung mga pastries, o yung mga pagkain po na matataas sa kolesterol, kagaya po ng mga karne. Yan po yung mga pagkain na kung saan, pag tumaas po ang ating LDL, high risk po tayo sa sakit sa puso. O kaya naman, kung may sakit tayo sa puso, ay lalo pa pong tataas ang ating um, posibilidad na tayo po ay atakihin. Ngayon po, hindi natin gustong tumaas yung LDL. Gusto po natin maipababa ito. Kaya naman po, ang i-empower natin is yung HDL, yung good cholesterol. Sa so, magitan po ng pagkain na mga masustansyang pagkain, mga prutas, gulay, whole grains, mga beans, legumes, yun po ay makakatulong para maitaas yun. Isa pa ang exercise, ganun din po ang pagiging happy natin o yung pagmamanage natin ng stress. Isa pong banda is yung ating fats. Meron pong good and bad fat. Ano po yung mga sources na yon? Para po sa bad fat, ito po yung mga pagkain po na lahat po ng pagkain natin na ating priniprito. Ngayon po, ang gusto natin is yung good fat. Ano naman po yung sources ng good fat? Ito po yung mga naturally na makukuha natin sa mga gulay at whole grains. 
at mga beans. Ito po yung mga avocado, yung ating mga nuts, yung mga ating whole grains, mga legumes, mga beans. Sila po yung mga pagkain na kung saan makakapagbigay sa atin ng good fat. Gusto po natin na maiwasan ang sakit sa puso at kung may sakit naman po sa puso ay ate po itong um, mapagaling sa pamamagitan po ng mga pagkain masustansya. Welcome back to Dynamic Living the Total You with our episode In Focus, Heart Talk with Dr. Jasper. Dr. Jasper, heto ngayon, eh, ano ang pwede nating mga gagawin? In other words, eh, what are the diagnostics? Kasi syempre, pupunta sa yung patient, magsasabi siya, heto yung mga nararamdaman niya. Pero are you going to perform diagnostics on these patients? Para alam ko yung ating mga viewers na pag kami eh, pumunta kay Dr. Jasper, these are the possible tests that he will be requesting to assess me. Yes, Doc. Ang una-una natin i-request, syempre, is the ECG. Kasi doon natin may kita if there are any changes on the ECG na tinatawag natin ischemic changes that could point to a coronary artery disease. If normal ang ECG, then but the patient is still symptomatic, may nararamdaman siya na chest pain, madaling mapagod, then we have to do other tests. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin stress test or po pwede tayong yung tinatawag natin to the echo, yun yung mga pwede natin gawin for mm -hmm. the patient. So, these are the basic tests, no? Yes. Plus, you do laboratories also on these patients. So, having said that, let's proceed further. So, what are the indications for you to be able to say na, itong patient na to ay medical ang management. So, kayo po ay bibigyan ko ng gamot. Ito po yung reseta ninyo. Kailangan inumin ninyo to. Or kaya naman, eh, is there such a thing na after a medical treatment or management fails, eh, kailangan ng surgery. So, sino-sino ito? At ano ang mga indications? Meron tayong tatlong klase ng atake sa puso. Yung unang tinatawag natin, tinatawag natin unstable angina. Pangalawa is yung non-ST elevation na MI. And the third is the ST elevation MI. The third, the ST elevation MI, yun yung tinatawag natin medical emergency. Which, pag dumating yung pasyente sa emergency room, nakita natin sa ECG, mataas yung kanyang ECG, immediately we have to subject this patient to an intervention. Mm -hmm. Yun yung tinatawag natin coronary angiogram para malaman natin kung may baras sa ugat ng puso or wala. Kung may baras sa ugat ng puso, we immediately open up yung baradong ugat ng puso. Mm -hmm. However, may mga pagkakataon na sobrang barado yung ugat ng puso, hindi, kakaya, hindi kayanin ng tinatawag nating percutaneous coronary intervention, ito yung mga sinasubject natin for operation or for bypass. Mm -hmm. So sila, at that stage in their lives, eh, if you, I mean, in your practice, when you bring this to the patient's attention o kaya naman sa family, eh, ano yung usual reaction nila? Are they afraid? Are they hopeful? Or are they kind of, or do you get to see patients also who will refuse to do this? Common na reaction yung doc na matatakot sila because mm -hmm. when we explain the procedure to the patient, we have to explain the risk and the benefits of the procedure. Siyempre, this is an invasive procedure. Meron siyang kaakibat talaga ng risk. However, it's only less than 1%. What are these risks? Um, po, pwedeng, kasi this is... When you, when you talk about risks, are possible complications? Yes, you know? doc. Uh -huh. Since this is a heart attack, heart attack itself, meron na siyang inherent risk na po pwedeng magkaroon ng irregularidad sa tibok ng puso, po pwedeng tumigil ang tibok ng puso while doing the procedure, and we have these minor complications, yun yung mga pagdurugo doon sa tinusukan, mm -hmm. or po pwedeng mahilo yung pasyente, po pwedeng magkaroon ng allergy doon sa contrast na ibibigay, Mm -hmm. Pero 99% of the time, there are no complications. Mm -hmm. And have you encountered a patient na will refuse to do it considering na it's going to be a life-saving procedure? Yes, Doc. There mm -hmm. are still patients who refuses to do that life-saving procedure. And this, what are their reasons? First, financially. Uh -huh. However, sa Philippine Heart Center, meron kasi tayong charity patients wherein um, they only pay for depende sa category nila pero that's less than the private na presyo. Presyo. Uh -huh. Eh, ang atin bang, you know, in the Philippines, would you be able to say na, of course, we know that it's Philippine Heart Center, but in the provinces, 
which are remote, do we have centers also that are capable of doing what you are doing in Philippine Heart Center? Yung sinasabi ko is the coronary angiogram and percutaneous coronary intervention or PCI. Unfortunately, not all hospitals are capable of doing these things. Mm -hmm. Meron lang siguro mangilan-ngilan sa mga provinces na meron Major ito. cities siguro, ano, meron yes, yan. Yes, major uh -huh. cities. Pero not all major cities then ay meron. Uh -huh. However, um, project ng Philippine Heart Center ngayon is we are doing satellite satellite um, offices or clinics that can perform this. Yes, you have been very aggressive in your advocacies, no? We know that for a fact. Kasi kami, from the province, we know na Heart Center is trying to help these um, satellite centers to be able to perform this. And which is actually bringing nearer to the homes yes. of the Filipinos yung inyong capability. And that is very laudable. Eh. So let's talk about um, prevention. Kasi ito naman yung thrust na ating program. Eh. What are the things that our people, yung kababayan natin, would be able to do in order for them, you know, as much as possible, ma-minimize man lang, if not totally, ma-remove yung kanilang risk for developing a coronary artery disease. First is lifestyle change. Siyempre, we have to eat healthy foods. When we say healthy foods, low in sodium and low in fats. Mm -hmm. What about sugar? Eh, matamis. Pagka-sweet toast, di ba? <laughs> Um, we also have to limit taking sugars, mm -hmm. mainly because of the risk of developing diabetes, which mm -hmm. is a risk factor for developing coronary artery disease. Mm -hmm. And siguro, keeping a very, you know, a, a healthy lifestyle would include also exercise, movement, yes. no? Para naman medyo maibsan yan eh. So, having said that, eh, is there life after being diagnosed with a coronary artery disease or is there life after being treated with um, coronary angiogram, percutaneous, or even a bypass? Yes, Doc, there is life after a heart attack, mm -hmm. especially when treated medically by a cardiologist. Marami tayong mga nag-atake sa puso na ngayon okay na, nakabalik na sila sa trabaho, nagagawa na nila yung mga dati nilang nagagawa. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it should not hamper one from doing what he or she is supposed to do. Yes. Uh, eto bang quality of life nila, Doc, eh, it will improve with the management or heto na lang, tanungin kita. Is it a lifetime event? In other words, if they are on medications, kasi medical and treatment nila or post-surgical sila, eh, is there going to be a day wherein they will stop taking all those medicines? Sabi nila, ay doc, magaling na ako. I feel good. So can I stop it? No. <laughs> Kailangan ituloy nila yung gamot uh -huh. kasi pag nag-atake ka na sa puso, it's also a risk factor na ma pwede ka ulit magkaroon ng atake sa puso. Kaya uh -huh. lahat ng gamot, kahit na operahan ka na, tuloy-tuloy pa rin. So you are telling our viewers na a single attack can lead to another attack. Yes. So, you know, it's something na it doesn't end from that beginning, no? Na nagsimula doon. Yes. Is it true also, Doc, na if you have a first heart attack, the second attack that you may have may be worse than the first or the third one? Pwede siya if the first heart attack was undiagnosed mm -hmm. or hindi nagamot yung first heart attack. Mm -hmm. So the second or the yung mga susunod na heart attack, pwede mas grabe talaga. Okay. Thank you so much, Doc Jasper. Thank I, you We din, learned doctor. a lot. No? So what would be your message or advice to our viewers? Um, para po sa lahat na ating mga nanonood, um, advokasya po ng Philippine Heart Association kasama po ang Philippine Heart Center is to modify yung tinatawag natin mga risk factors. Kailangan natin magamot kung meron kayong high blood, kung meron kayong diabetes, and you have to consult your cardiologist every time na meron kayong nararamdaman sa inyong puso. At marami ng cardiologists sa buong bansa, hindi lang, hindi na mahirap puntahan, di yes. ba? Okay, so sabihin po natin, the heart is actually a very vital organ that will help us live a quality and fruitful, productive life. And it takes, you know, for us to be able to take care of this. Otherwise, we may end up with problems later. At sabi nga po dito sa Psalm 28 verse 7, My heart trusts in Him and my heart leaps up for joy. So magandang araw po sa ating lahat.